Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Go Lumio webinar series, where we are providing learning opportunities to highlight Lumio's engaging and collaborative tools. In this Getting Started session, we'll show you how to get up and running with your Lumio Spark subscription. My name is Sarah Merritt McCoy, and I'm a professional development specialist from Texas. In today's webinar, Getting Started with Lumio Spark Organization and Shared Libraries, I'm joined by Asha Evans, a customer success manager from Florida. We encourage participation in today's session. Our colleague, Jennifer Underwood, will be supporting you in the chat if you have any questions or ideas that you'd like to share in today's session. At the end of today's webinar, additional resources will also be shared in the chat. And for participating today, a certificate will be provided after you complete a brief survey. So make sure you're on the lookout for that survey link. At this point, I'm going to turn things over to Asha so that we can get started with today's webinar, getting started with Lumio Spark Organization and Shared Libraries. Take it away, Asha. Thank you, Sarah, for that introduction. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. We are super excited uh, to help you get started with Lumio Spark. Lumio Spark is a district or organization level offering. It is not available for individual users. And what it allows an organization to do is uh, support efficient workflows within the organization. And it also encourages collaboration amongst educators and allows for instructional consistency. As Sarah mentioned uh, in today's session, we will be going over how you get started with your Lumio Spark subscription. So our session is broken up into uh, two sections, essentially. We'll have one portion, the beginning, where we'll focus on how to set it up because you have Lumio Spark, but now what? What do you do? So we're going to show you how to get it set up in the admin portal where you're able to manage your software licenses as well as your users. And then once we get you all set up there, we'll shift gears into Lumio so that you can see what Lumio Spark looks like in live action. Uh, we'll go over the organization library as well as the shared library and the roles that are associated with both of those. So you're in for a treat. And um, before we get started and actually sign in to the admin portal, I just wanna give you a quick little glimpse, a little sneak peek into what it will look like when you sign in for the first time after acquiring Lumio Spark. So uh, here on the screen that I'm sharing, I have a little screenshot and this is what it would look like for you uh, after your first sign in. And there is a pop up that appears at the bottom of the screen that basically lets you know, hey, you have a Lumio Spark subscription. It alerts you to the fact that you'll have access to an organizational library and it will give you the ability to start adding your users, which is what we'll do today. Also on the screen, you'll notice that you have the ability to uh, manage your organization. And for those of you that have already provisioned or rostered in the admin portal for your Lumio standard plan, it's the exact same portal we'll be using to roster for the Lumio Spark plan. Okay, so nothing new and it's probably already something that you're familiar with. Now that you've gotten this uh, sneak peek, let's go ahead and take it live. And I wanna give you the opportunity to sign in to your admin portal account. You can do this by going to adminportal.smarttech.com and Jennifer will also uh, provide that information for you in the chat. Once you are signed in to the admin portal, you should see a screen that looks similar to the previous one that I was showing you. So you may get that pop-up that lets you know you have access to Lumio Spark, and you should be able to see that you have the ability to manage your software as well as your organization. Alrighty, so I am signed in to my admin portal account and you can see it looks pretty similar to that screenshot that I shared before. 
The only difference is I don't have that pop up, right? Because I've already been signing into my portal. This is not my first time. Here on this home screen, uh, in the top right corner, I can see the organization that I'm in. So this is the organization that I'll be managing users for and I'll be able to uh, manage my software for. And then over on the left side of the screen, I have my uh, two tabs here that allow me to go between managing my software and managing my organization. For the sake of today's webinar, I'm going to stay right here on um, managing my software and just go over some of the information that you're able to see uh, from this view. When you are managing your software, you'll be able to view the actual um, software that you have in your, your portal. So what's a part of your subscription? In my case, I have access to a Lumio standard plan as well as a Lumio Spark plan. For both of these plans, I have the ability to manage users. This is where I would go if I wanted to add educators so that they have access to the software. Notice that these are two separate options. So let's say that you are an admin that has already rostered your users under the Lumio standard plan. You all have been Lum using Lumio for a couple years, teachers love it. And now you've gotten Lumio Spark so that you all can experience that. You have to manage users for your Lumio Spark plan. That means you have to add your educators, assign Lumio Spark licenses to them, in order for them to experience the features of the Lumio Spark plan. They will not receive those features by default of being rostered in your Lumio standard plan. Okay, so be sure when you're ready for educators to use Lumio Spark that you actually roster them and add them under your Lumio Spark plan, which is what we're going to do today. You can add users by selecting the Manage Users option. And notice I did that for my Lumio Spark plan. When you select that option, it'll show you the um, users that you currently have in there. Maybe you don't have any, right, if this is your first time. And when you're ready to add users so that they can access those shared libraries and organization library, you would just select add users in the top left corner. When you select add users, it will give you the options available for you to add educators to this plan. So just like rostering with the Lumio standard option, you can type email addresses in or copy and paste them over. You can import a CSV file. And then we also have auto syncing options. For today, I'm just going to type the uh, email addresses in since I don't have many to add. Um, but remember, you do have the ability to um, use those other options that are there. So I'm adding myself and Sarah. And once you add users, a pop-up will appear on your screen to let you know you've added someone. It also shows you the organization that you've added them to. And then you have access to your organization library settings. By default, every user you add will be a viewer, everyone. Um, but as the admin in the admin portal, you have the ability to change their role to an editor or a library administrator and we'll go over those roles in just a little bit. But with my viewers, I can decide if I want them to be able to add resources in the organization library. If I don't, I can toggle the switch. If I do, I can toggle it back on. Whatever setting you choose, whether they can add resources or not, it will apply to every viewer in your organization. So if I make this change here, 
after adding uh, myself and Sarah, we will be able to add resources as viewers as well as any other viewers that are added after us and any viewers that were already added into the portal. I'm going to go ahead and press confirm. And now I can see, here I am right here, Asha Evans, viewer. If I scroll down, I can find Sarah Merritt. There she is, viewer. And there are a few other viewers here in this um, account. And all of these viewers have the ability to add resources because we toggle that switch on. Now, if I wanted to change the role of any of my users that are added here, I can do so by selecting them using the box that appears uh, at the far left side of the screen. So I can select Asha or any of the users here, but I'm going to select Asha and Sarah. And once I have my user selected, I'll notice an edit library role button highlights up at the top. And you're able to select that to change the roles of those selected users. If I wanted to change both of us to the same role, I have the ability to change all users to, let's say, library administrator. And so now you can see those changes applied to myself as well as Sarah. But if I wanted to maybe give us each a different role, let's say I make myself an editor and I make Sarah a library administrator. I can easily select for both users using the drop down menu that appears at the far right. When you click on the drop down menu, it gives you a little description about the type of access that particular role will have in your organization library. So, for example, with a viewer, it lets me know that they can preview and download library resources. Also, in our case, because we toggled that switch on, viewers can add resources. Underneath, the editor can add, edit, and delete library resources. And then lastly, your library administrator can do all of that as well as manage your library settings. Okay, so once you read through the roles, you can decide which role you would like to assign to your users. Hit save, and those changes will apply. Okay, so now I am an editor, and if I scroll down, I can see that Sarah is a library administrator. I currently have my users organized by email, and it's in an alphabetical order. However, let's say I wanted to see all of my library administrators together, or maybe all of my viewers together, so I can quickly assess who is what role. You do have the ability to organize by library role. I'm just gonna mosey on over to the far right and click where it says library role. So now I can see all of my library admins. I can see my editors as well as my viewers. This makes it really easy for you to go in and make some changes if you need to, because now you can see all of your roles together. Okay, so we've added users. We've edited their role. Now, what happens if maybe you want to remove access for a user? Well, you are able to remove users here in the portal. If you want to remove a user or users, you would select them just like we did for editing their library role. And now that I have this user selected myself, I'm going to go ahead and click Remove User up in the top left-hand corner. You can see it's a big red button. 
When I select that option, it wants me to make sure that I'm certain this is what I want to do. So it tells me if I remove this user, they will not have access to subscriber features. So that means they'll no longer have access to your organization library and they will no longer be able to create their own shared libraries. I'm okay with that. So I'm going to remove that user. And now I'm gone. <laughs> okay, so you can easily add users, edit their roles, and remove users if need be all here from within the portal. Now that we've gone through how to set it up on the back end and, you know, give your educators access to those Lumio Spark features, I think we're ready to start using it. Uh, what do you think, Sarah? Yeah, now that we've got it all set up, I think we should hop on over into Lumio and see what this looks like. All right. So, Sarah, you can take it away. I'll go ahead and stop sharing here. And awesome. that's what Lumio Spark looks like in live action. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. And I've gone ahead and I've logged into my Lumio page here. And um, I know if you have not seen the Lumio side of things, Jennifer, can you drop in our, our Lumio URL in the chat in case anyone needs to log in with us? So I have went ahead and I've logged in and right now I'm in the my library tab and this is what it's going to default to because these are all of the things that I've created or saved in my library. And today I'm going to go and hop on over to the second tab called our shared libraries page, our shared libraries tab, because that's what Asha has just shown us how to set up. So on the teacher side of things, when I go over into that shared libraries tab, here's a quick view of what I might see. And in our time today, I'm gonna tell you about three different types of shared libraries that your teachers might have access to. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the organization library that you would have just set up in Smart Admin Portal. So just like Asha showed us, once you set up your organization library and you decide what teachers or what educators have access to that library, they are gonna see that in their shared libraries tab when they log on. And they'll know it's an organization library because you'll likely name it some type of organizational library. And there's also a little icon in the top left-hand corner that represents that this is an organization, which can be a campus library, a district library, whatever your organization has set up. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click into my organization library here. And here's the access to things that people have added into this library. So if I'm a viewer, in this library, you have gone in Smart Admin Portal and you have just designated me a viewer. I can access any of the content that has been added in this organization library. And so you'll notice that there's folders created if you want to organize. And we've got features here at the top for what's new in the library. So as a viewer, I can scroll over any of these items that have been uploaded in my organization library and I can click preview in order to see a preview of that resource or that activity. So if afterwards I go through and I look at this addition facts example, and it is something that I want to use with my students and in my class, all I have to do now is save it to my library and it starts processing. And once it's loaded, it's gonna show up in my library tab. So then I was really able to very easily get a resource that's provided by my district or provided by my organization, and I can quickly add it to my library to save myself time later. So I'm going to come back to the shared libraries tab again, and again, I'm in my organization library. And so that's what I can see as a viewer. Now, if you turned on that toggle where you let your viewers add things to your organization library, or if you have coded somebody as an editor and they can add things to the organization library, they're going to see this import button as well in the top left-hand corner. Now, if you've made it to where viewers cannot add things to the library, they can only view and save from the library, they won't see this import button. 
But since Asha added me in there and she gave me those privileges in the smart admin portal, I can click this import button and I can very quickly pull in a file or an activity that I've already created in my library. Or if I'm in multiple shared libraries, I can pull in a resource that I have from one of my other shared libraries. So I'm just going to select my library for now so you can see what this looks like. And when I click, when I click that, here is an example of all of the different files that I've created or saved in my library. And so I could simply choose whatever one I might want. I hit select, and then it's going to import into that district library. And there's a few things that I can fill out. And this is certain things that you can decide with your organization and your district, what is required and not on this detail page. But I can put the resource name, descriptions. We can even put keywords, tags, assign it to certain grade levels, all of these different details, subjects, resource type that you can tag here on in your district or organization library. And then I'll click import to library. And it's gonna actually add to this organization library. So anybody else that has access to this shared space can very quickly preview and save this to their own library as well. And so that's a quick look into our organization library. That's our first type of library that I wanted to talk about. I'm going to come back to shared libraries here, and I'm going to talk about the second type of library. Somebody may have added you to a library that they've created because users in the Lumio Spark plan also have the ability to create their own shared libraries. So this would be a library separate from the organization library. This is a small library that maybe you've set up with your district team or uh, your content team, your grade level team. Maybe if you have a few co-planners that you uh, share resources with and you want to create that shared space. Users can create up to five of their own shared libraries and invite other users to participate in those. And so the second type of library that I want to talk to you about is if somebody has created a shared library and added you to that space. So here we are in my, uh, my PDS team library here. This is a library that someone else has created and they added me to it because they felt that I was a member of this team and they wanted me to access these resources. And so notice it's not the organization library because there is no little organization icon in the top left hand corner. So when I click into this one, though, it's going to look very similar. Whoever created this is going to be the library administrator, and they're going to determine when they add me, if I am a viewer or if I'm an editor. And it's the exact same thing. If I'm a viewer, I can go and preview and save anything in this library that I've been added to. Or if whomever's created this library has made me an editor, I can also go to the import button and I can add things to this smaller library as well. And so when I go back here, I can see both my organization library and any small team libraries that I might have been added to. Now, let me go ahead and dismiss that out the corner. Now, the third and final shared library I want to mention for you all today is a shared library that you create. So we talked about if somebody else added you into a library, but let's say you decide to make your own shared library that you want to share with your grade level team or a co-planner. Well, when you create your own shared library, it's going to have this star in the top left hand corner. So while this one had the organization icon to show me it was an organization library, this one had no icon to tell me that it was a small group library I was added to. This last one has a star because it's a shared library that I have created and I am the administrator for. And so if you also wanted to create your own shared library, all you would do is go to the top corner here where it says new shared library. So I'm going to select that now and then you will get to name your library. So this might be the 10th grade English team at my school. So I'm going to say at campus. I can put a description here if I want to. It also comes in with a preloaded one, encouraging teachers to collaborate with each other here. I can drop an image if I want to have a specific image in the background, and I can also customize and choose whatever color that I want there on my on the tile card on the outside of my library. 
And then before I hit create, one thing that I do want you to note is that a lot of the other Lumio features you're familiar with seeing, such as this little graduation cap, are going to show up in Lumio Spark as well. So as a reminder, anytime you see a little graduation cap in Lumio, if you click that graduation cap, it's going to show you a quick video or a quick resource recapping that feature or that function. So if you ever need to review some of the steps that we're going over in this webinar, you can also use that graduation cap at different stages. But once I've filled out all of my information here, I'm going to click create. And it has gone ahead right here and created my new shared library. Again, it has that little star there to tell me that I've made it. So now I'm going to click into my library here. And it's going to give me these little walkthroughs if it's your first time doing it. So whereas before I was just a member of somebody else's library, since this is a library I've created, I have the opportunity to access and manage the users here. So I can click this by inviting P and invite people to my library. So if I want them to just view the contents of my library, I can send them this viewer link and they'll be able to join my library and view and save any of the material. Or if I want them to have the editor privileges, and it tells you a recap right there of what each of these different roles include, I can give folks the editor privileges instead when I send out this link. Now, also when I'm in this library, I've got access to this little gear in the top right hand corner that when I click that gear, I can again manage the members that have joined my shared library and I can also manage the settings of the library if I need to. And then the rest of the library is going to be really familiar. Anything that you add is going to show up on this little dashboard here. And then we've got that import button here in the top left hand corner if you want to pull something in from your library. And so just as a reminder, if you want to create your own shared libraries right now, users can create up to five of their own small group shared libraries. And this isn't going to include, this is not going to include the organization library that you have already um, been a part of from your smart admin portal. Now, just as a reminder too, if you create your own shared library, you are the creator, so you can manage users. You get to decide who is the admin, who is the viewer, who is the editor. Now, the great thing is I've been adding a lot of things in the shared library tab. Once you have your libraries set up, once you've joined the specific shared libraries that you wanna join, you can also add contents directly from your Lumio library. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to go back over to the My Library tab. So now I've switched back over to look at the things that I have created and saved. And let's say I want to then go add this lesson to one of my shared libraries. I can click the Shared Libraries tab, go find that specific library, and import it into that library. Or if I want, I can add this resource in directly from my Lumio library. So I'm gonna hit these three dots in whatever lesson or activity you wanna share. And there is the option to copy to. And so when I click copy to, look, here's a list of all of the different organization libraries and all of the different shared libraries that I'm a part of. So I can simply select whichever one that I want. If there's a specific folder that I want to sort it into, I can do so, or I can create a new folder since I'm an editor in this library. And then I'll just click copy here. And now here is again that detail page that we looked at earlier that came up when we were in shared libraries and importing. I can just fill out this information. And just like before, I'll click copy to library. And now it's going to show up in that organization library that I have access to. So it's really going to be your choice if you want to add directly from your My Library or if you want to go to the Shared Libraries tab and import whilst in that library. Okay, and it looks like Jennifer is holding down the chat over there with any questions. So I'm going to let her keep responding to those. And let me go ahead and bring it back here to our presentation because I know Asha has a few announcements and resources to share as well. Awesome. Thank you for that, that tour. 
uh, Sarah. Of course. <laughs> it's amazing being able to see the organization library and shared libraries in action. So hopefully uh, our viewers are excited to um, be able to use those with their organization. All righty. So um, you all joined us today to see how to get Lumio Spark set up from the admin portal side and then also got a glimpse into what it would look like when you are in Lumio. Um, but we do have another session more geared towards educators um, next month, February 8th at 3 p.m. So we encourage you if maybe you want to attend or if you have some educators that you work with that may be interested in seeing how Lumio Spark works and how they could um, use it in their workflow, uh, feel free to join us at that session and Jennifer will provide the link in the chat. We are always looking to grow our ambassador community. Um, so also in the chat, we'll provide a, a link to how you can become a Lumio ambassador. Uh, this is a great place for you to go to connect with um, educators and district leaders that are using Lumio, are excited about technology. And even as you start to uh, use Lumio Spark, or maybe you're looking to learn more about Lumio Spark, this is a great community for you to uh, become a part from. I mean, what? <laughs> become a part of. <laughs> and then we have our uh, resources page that is getting shared in the chat with you all. All kinds of Spark goodies to support you. There is a Lumio Spark playlist full of uh, videos that show you how to get up and running with Lumio Spark. There's also a checklist to help get you started as well as a direct link to the Lumio Spark support page. And if you are on social media, we have all of our social handles down there. So feel free to connect with us um, and share like how you're using Lumio or how you're using Lumio Spark uh, in your organization. Awesome. And Asha, if I can just, I'm going to interject really quickly here because a huge update here from Anshu. I think she's answering a question that a lot of people have is that right now folks are able to, you know, preview and save different lessons and activities that are shared in the Lumio shared libraries, pardon me, the Spark shared libraries. And so this is a feature that is going to constantly come out with new updates. So I know if you're looking for the co-edit feature and a few other functions. There are more things coming with Spark. This is just our initial release. So um, if you're really excited about that feature as well, we are with you and we can't wait to come back and show you more about it too. Yeah. And I'll uh, I'll clarify one of these, these questions here about the standard users. So standard users can join shared libraries um, in order to preview and save those contents, but they will not be able to create their own shared libraries. So in order to create Create those shared libraries that will have to be added in the smart admin portal under that uh, Lumio Spark tag that uh, Asha showed. Well, thank you all for joining us, and um, we look forward to seeing you at a future session. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Jennifer, and everyone for their support in the chat. Mm -hmm.